Hi Bozeman, my name is Miles McGeehan and uh, I'm a science teacher at the high school. I'm currently assigned to teaching AP Biology and Chemistry. I've been in a district for about nine years now and uh, I've been teaching for a number of years before moving to Montana. Um, and I, I wanted to take a moment to share uh, I guess some of my um, experiences using an LMS that I, I, I want to pass on that maybe will help save you some time with organization and uh, basic ways of kind of communicating and building a calendar and that kind of stuff with students. Um, I've been using an LMS uh, for many, many years in my classes. Uh, different districts have had access to LMSs before moving to uh, Montana. And uh, I can, you know, I guess uh, w warmly say that I'm a better teacher with an LMS. Uh, I still use plenty of paper pencil assignments in my classroom. So an LMS doesn't take over my classroom, but it, it is a great resource from time to time. Um, and in the situation we're in, it's the best resource for um, connecting with students, whether they're in your classroom and we're helping them learn to navigate the LMS, or whether they're uh, at home or in a pod or at a uh, child care facility or whatever. So. I would also, you know, start the year off by telling students, so like, hey, this is a really cool tool, and we're going to be experimenting together. So I'd like you to share with me at any time if you're feeling um, confused, and I'm going to learn and make adaptations as we go. And what I'm doing in the first week might look different by the third week and by the fifth week, and by Christmas time and spring break and so forth. So I, I think if we're if we are communicative in the beginning that uh, things will be flexible and uh, that this is a growth mindset for all, um, it, it will set up the students to be our advocates as well. All right, so I'm going to jump into some thinking. Um, and I'm going to be thinking out loud for a little while with this video about how I start to adapt my AP, <clears throat> excuse me, AP Biology course uh, into the LMS. Um, workflow. Here we go. All right, so here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, <clears throat> how am I going to start the year? Well, in AP Bio, uh, I'm going to pare this down, but imagine I have uh, these four major units I cover throughout the year. And so I'm going to start thinking about each unit as a module in Canvas. I know what you're thinking, though, like, Maybe you're a new teacher, maybe you're a teacher that's just changed to a new grade level, and you're not sure what all the different units are throughout the year. Fear not, let's just pick one to start with. So I'm going to start with ecology. Next, I'm thinking within ecology, are there some you know, subgroups or themes? And so in ecology, I break it down into population dynamics followed by predator-prey relationships and then trophic cascades. Let's see how that looks uh, within how I can organize that in Canvas in the LMS. Okay, here I'm in my modules page, and um, I've got ecology, evolution, cell biology, genetics, and again, this is a little bit pared down. Um, I do a little bit more with AP Biology, but I just want to make some examples here. And in ecology, if I click here, I can set up, I've got three headers. so. On that whiteboard diagram, I had population dynamics, predator-prey relationships, and trophic level cascades. So uh, these headers, you can create those in your module. When you hit the plus button, if you select the text header, uh, you can create those kind of uh, those little bands. Now within the text header, I'm going to start populating with uh, the different lessons that uh, under that go under population dynamics. So my first one is called population dynamics. One, theoretical. Now bear with me, this is college biology, so there, you're going to see some stuff that's a little heady, but uh, nonetheless, I want to show you just the lesson flow and how to make a template so that you can just copy and paste the template when you design the next lesson so that it's easier to fill in and that you're not just uh, spending time over and over retyping the same things with each activity. So within my topic, now notice I name it a topic, and that's important. Later I'll mention why I call it a topic, so I can reference it in the calendar or in the week at a glance. 
I like to start with a, a hook, objective, something like engage, explore, and then like a task or the way I evaluate student learning or they can evaluate themselves, self-evaluation. And uh, I certainly invite you to stray from the words I've put here, choose what works for you, and uh, maybe have a conversation in your PLC, have a conversation in your um, teams at the middle school or in your departments. And I, I'll tell you that it's not the same what I put in my AP Biology class. These words change from what I put in my chemistry class. I work with different populations of students. And so there's no right or wrong here. I would say uh, refer back to kind of your, your gut instincts and best practices and the way you communicate on the whiteboard and think critically about how you present to students. Now, I know that a lot of us present the hook or the why to our students when we're in a face-to-face -face classroom through verbal interactions, through short little video clips, through um, cool demonstrations. Like we make it very vivid to students like why this is important. And the this space here shouldn't go underlooked because when they're in distance learning, if they're not with you, I think it's important to help make it clear why. And so that could be like an essential question. Um, it could be, well, I'll pause for a second. I'll, I'll show you the template and then it has some prompts to get your creative juices going. Anyways, as we move down a little bit, I like to use the uh, objective statement and then move into embedding some media, maybe some textbook pages, and then um, some type of task. So <clears throat> in this particular task, I'm using a page, a page setup in uh, Canvas, and I'm not asking them to turn anything in. I'm giving them uh, some practice problems. There's a little tutorial with this, and then they have an answer key so they can self-assess. And then I would uh, discuss with them in other means that they, if they struggle with those practice problems, they can reach out to me, we can uh, do a Google Meet, we can do office hours and so forth. <clears throat> but a lot of times if you give them some type of like solutions, and remember maybe it's an adult that's helping them through this in the first weeks or two, if, if they have an answer key, um, it will go a long way in, in helping students self-assess uh, where they are and where they are not. All right. Let's get to how I make a template. So I'm gonna to go to the pages area and I've got this template with some descriptions. And so I'll pause on the screen here for a minute. You can read out loud. You can pause your own video and keep reading these. And I love some of the modules we've been working through uh, in Canvas that talk about criteria for success. Uh, I oftentimes embed those uh, terms like criteria for success into my assignment directions. So I might adapt this. You know, I'm learning Canvas uh, with you too. And, and so I might adapt this template. And uh, I by no means say that this template is what you should do. You should... Um, have a discussion and uh, but but maybe if you think about what a template might look like here's how it could work you can simply when you build a template copy it so I'm highlighting it I'm going to use some quick keys on my keyboard command C to copy it and then when I want to make a new page I can select the plus page button and then paste the template in I name the template a one in front of the template. So if I surf through these different pages here, if I put a one in front, the template will always be at the top of like the alphanumeric list. So here's the template without descriptions. It's a little bit more basic. The hook, objective, engage, and here I put media and textbook and so forth. And then, all right, so another way other than copy and paste I could come over here to the little dot, dot, dot and choose to duplicate. And so here it shows up as a duplicate copy and now I can choose to edit. And so I'm gonna call this population dynamics 
lesson two, and this one is more realistic. What doesn't happen in theory, what happens in nature. And now I'm going to start modifying this uh, for my new lesson. So I'm going to edit. And let me show you how I populate. You know, I can write the, I, or the, um, the question, like the essential question, or have some kind of cool cartoon up here or something. I can do my I can statement. Now, imagine I want to embed a YouTube video. And I know we've seen this uh, on our module, learning modules and so forth. Uh, I'm going to choose the, here it is, the insert edit media, and it's going to ask me the source. So I've got the YouTube video I want to in include for students to peruse up here, and I'm going to just hit the share button, and I'm going to just copy this, or choose this copy button, and come back to my canvas, and paste it in. I know I'm going quick, so you can rewind and watch it again. Here's the thing, it says dimensions 560. That's actually going to be really large. Um, I don't like it that large. So I like it to go around more like 250 and it's going to constrain the proportion. So you're going to notice the numbers are going to adjust automatically and it fits in a little smaller. And I train my students that I don't want them to watch this little itty bitty video, but if they hit play, they can click here and watch it on YouTube or they can click here and watch it full screen. And so that's how I train my students how to interact with that little video clip. FYI, mess around with the numbers you like. Maybe 250 is a little bit too big, too small. Um, explore. All right, so if I hit save, then I'm good to go. Or maybe I need to hit save and publish. There are some tips for you how to make a template. Next up, I'm gonna go back to my modules. And uh, I can add that most recent one. I, I wasn't fully done with it yet, but here it is. Add the item. And oh, it's populated down here, so I'm gonna slide it up. And I wanna indent it, so I'll come over to the little dot, dot, dot. Get it to the kind of same indention. Boy, I really like to have the word topic in there. I don't like that I forgot to write topic here, so I'm gonna just quickly edit. Scroll to the end and write topic. Good to go. I find there's value in keeping redundancy in how you name things for students. And then you'll use those same names within like a week at a glance or a calendar uh, and so forth. It's also helpful for maybe a parent or guardian that's helping the students navigate in their first weeks. All right, I'm gonna um, go through one more now these are both pages. You can see the little icon here represents their pages. These are like one-way streets. I use a page to just get information out. Maybe there's a formative task at the end, but I didn't actually collect the work from the students to put into the gradebook. Now I'm gonna use an assignment when I wanna collect work from the students. So I'm gonna uh, kind of speed up the motion of building this assignment called the Rabbit's Grass Weeds Assignment where they are gonna use um, a, a virtual simulation and they're gonna follow directions that I've presented to them through a PDF document. And when they're done uh, with the simulation, when they, they're gonna present what they learned by following the directions in the document, and they're gonna make a single Google slide as their artifact of understanding. And then I'm gonna ask them to upload that back, and then I'm gonna provide a grade to them. So here's how it works. I'm gonna open up, and I, I've already copy and pasted in um, my template, so it looks the same. You know, I went to the pages button and I copy and pasted it here, and now I'm gonna start editing it. And I'm gonna speed it up uh, really rapidly so you can see how I work through this. All right, next I want to embed a PDF document that's actually in my Google Drive. <clears throat> so this is called the Rabbits, Grass, Weeds, Lab, Directions. And I'm going to simply highlight this term and uh, select the Google Drive. Now, 
No, I know it, what you're thinking. It's not the bison poop video. It's this one here. So I'm going to link it. And the uh, neat thing that Canvas does is it took the terms I had here and uh, and just hyperlinked it. So you saw that little yellow blur and then now it's a blue hyperlink. Pretty cool. In the directions, it's going to prompt them to go to a particular website. And so I'm going to call that the rabbit's grass weeds population website. And uh, I've got the tab open here. And uh, with the tab open, I'm going to just highlight over everything. So get the whole area. And I'm going to use my quick keys, Command C, to copy that. Come back to my tab with Canvas. And uh, highlight over these words here. And come up and this little chain link, very commonly used in a lot of other uh, you'll, you'll even find it like Microsoft or Google um, rich text editors so that's a link to a website URL and uh, I'm going to paste it in and so here I'm using the quick keys command V to paste insert the link and you see the little yellow blur and voila now there's a link for the students um, directions here website here and that's my engage and explore but do know that I might need to provide uh, extra front loading with my students and modeling and using Canvas real time in the classroom. So get the devices out and let's navigate and practice doing one of these together and and uh, and you know build that efficacy just like we do if the student goes to a soccer practice or a basketball practice and so forth. We start with small drills and skills and we level them up with time um, and, and so forth. So. Task evaluate. So here, um, in a simple world, in a face-to-face -face classrooms, I'm going to include some directions. And my directions are that they're going to build a simple one slide, Google slide, uh, demonstrating their understanding. And the layout for the Google slides is actually in the directions worksheet. So it actually provided a little template uh, icon of what they needed to include. So. I don't need to go into an elaborate uh, set of directions here other than uh, I'm going to say something like please upload your completed Google slide here and I'm going to uh, just keep it as, uh, as simple as that for right now for this demonstration. Notice as you go down below this is an assignment so I can choose how many points maybe it's a 4, 3, 2, 1, maybe it's 10 points, maybe it's 50 points I don't know what your your great expertise does, so I'll leave it as 10. Um, I can choose what they can upload. We saw in some of the practice modules this last week that you can do a text entry or, or maybe it's just a simple file. I want them to upload the Google slide, so I'm going to just simply choose file upload, but notice you can choose more than one if you want. I'm going to keep it to this is the only thing they can upload to me. Unlimited attempts, yes. Don't put just one because if they make a mistake, they can do it a second time and you can grade the most recent. That's the easiest way to go about it. All these other things are for you to explore at, um, at when you're ready to start adding due dates and, and uh, times when the assignment's visible and not visible and so forth. But you can leave them blank for now and it still all works just fine. So here's my assignment. It's worth 10 points. I'm going to go back to my modules page and let's add that assignment. So here we go, add assignment. There's my rabbit grass weeds assignment. And I'm gonna slide it on up and slide it on over. All right, so I hope this provides a little scaffolding for how you might start organizing modules, things like pages, which I consider like one-way streets of information, assignments, which are like two-way streets where you present information and they turn something back into you. I think it's important to take a moment and share what I would not do. And after having about 20 years of experience building LMSs, I've learned the hard way along the line that you should not build, well, I shouldn't say you should not, but I caution you to build an LMS module by week. Um, it may be appropriate for some really young learners, but the problem with building by week is that it's very difficult to reuse the stuff you built in the following year. 
because we inevitably start on a different day on the calendar. We start on a Wednesday, a Thursday, a Tuesday. And then as the year progresses, there are disruptions in our dynamic calendar setting. Like there's a fire drill um, or we have an assembly or um, there's a black bear in the playground and we have to modify our school schedule as a result. So if you organize all your content week by week, do know that it makes it challenging next year. It'll still be there, but you will have to do a lot of reorganization. I've learned that naming things topics works really well because then you can identify it on your um, at a glance sheet or identify it on your calendar. I'm going to pause here and uh, highlight how I might use the calendar tool. In a normal face-to-face -face setting, in a normal world, I use the calendar tool all the time. With blended learning, seeing two days a week students in, in my classroom and three days a week out and so forth, I haven't quite figured out that calendar tool just yet, but hopefully we make it back to like five days a week with students and here's how the calendar tool might work for you. If we end up in a total distance learning, it would work the same way. So on the calendar tool, Here's a partially completed calendar entry. Uh, what I want to emphasize is what I do is I make a, a template and then I just reuse the template from one day to the next just by merely copying and then pasting into a new calendar entry uh, these items. So I like to do something like what's due before the start of class. That's what they should have had done yesterday or the last night's homework. Um, objective, that's I, I can or students will be able to and I can just copy and paste that from, um, from the other areas of Canvas. And then agenda. Uh, here I like to kind of list out the order of events in the in the class period or the uh, online uh, daily to do, and then homework. Again, this is for a high school class setting, so it may look a little different for your grade band preferences. Now I do want to point out whenever I'm uh, building a calendar entry, you know, it's actually when you start it, it's going to look like this, um, and I want to point out that you should explore the more options button because here is where you get that rich text editor. Uh, where you can type in or paste that template. And uh, boy, I really love this. Take a look. This is like my kapow moment with the calendar and why this is so useful. I'm going to highlight the name of that activity of the day, the population dynamics one topic. You saw that earlier. And then I can simply come over here to uh, this, these dialog boxes and, and select that this is uh, associated with a page. And so here's that population dynamics one topic page and voila, it hyperlinks. It's so cool. So when the student comes to the calendar entry, they'll be able to click on that and go right into the daily assignment or the daily uh, page of, of content information and so forth. Um, very, very useful, I believe. We'll get a lot of mileage out of that. So do explore uh, using the calendar, and I would emphasize that the more you use the calendar, uh, if you use it every day, the kids will get used to it, you train them on it, and uh, this will be a great way to navigate through all right, I'll get off my soapbox there. I hope you find some of these items such as building templates and reusing those same kind of lesson flow templates um, advantageous in the first first weeks of, you, of your exploration of LMSs. And uh, by all means, uh, this is just a voluntary suggestion of ideas. So don't please take it as a doctrine. Please explore how it works for you and uh, have a lot of fun with it. Um, listen to your students, listen to your families. Um, invite constructive feedback and uh, ask your peers too like do you understand if I presented this to the students would you be able to follow this so maybe do a test drive with a uh, with a colleague in a passing period or during a prep period and see if your colleague would uh, be able to make sense of it like a third grader an eighth grader or a twelfth grader could well thanks for listening be safe be well see you on the other side of this have a great day, Bozeman. Remember, keep it classy.